All right, so that was Take the A Train by Billy Strayhorn. Um, I love jazz music, and uh, I love to improvise. Uh, and I've always really improvised at the piano and kind of wrote my own little songs. And in 2010, I graduated from MU with a degree in writing my own little songs. Uh, <laughs> so I... <laughs> decided that I'm gonna, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, now, jazz is a, a form of music that I've really mainly taught myself. I wasn't able to study it too much when I was in college. I was able to play a few big band numbers um, in some combos and things like that. And several, I mean, venues and performances, I've had to use some um, jazz techniques and things like that. Uh, so I've just, Learn, I mean, basically learned my, by myself by reading a few books on jazz theory and listening to a lot of recordings and also just doing a lot, just messing around, being okay with making mistakes, uh, which jazz is, has tons of that, just being okay with your mistakes. And I think I'm okay with that. Uh, and because I haven't formally studied it, I think that's what makes jazz much more um, alluring and exotic to me. Now, that next piece that I'll be playing is entitled A Dance That You Can't Dance To, which I wrote. Um, <laughs> and actually, I need, I need this. It's, I, uh, this is the only piece that I don't have memorized. I apologize. I'll give you some money back. <laughs> uh, however, in my defense, I just finished it like a few weeks ago. <laughs> Smells fresh. <laughs> and uh, the, the last several summers, I've been playing um, some ballet classes accompanying some of the CPAC um, kids' stuff that they do during the summer there. And when it comes to accompanying for ballet classes, you have to, you have to be really strict with your phrasing, with all the different types of the, the composition itself has to be very, very contained and restricted which makes sense because the dancers have to learn their steps to it, of course. Uh, but as a composer, doing that for five hours every day for a whole summer or two, it gets a little old. And so I decided, <laughs> I was just singing like things in my brain whenever I was just walking on the street, just four bar, four bar phrases, eight bar phrases, okay, okay. Let's do something different. So I wrote a dance that I don't think that you can dance to. Some of the things that are in it is there's 5-8 time, which is very odd. Um, some, most of the phrases are three bars or five bars, which is also very, very odd. Um, however, there is a refinement to it. It is supposed to sound like you could dance to it. It's pretending like you can dance to it. Um, and you'll hear that in just a moment. So uh, this is my premiere performance of A Dance You Can't Dance To.
These last three pieces on this first, on this first half, excuse me, uh, kind of touch on a little bit of few aspects of my life, and I would like to share about that. Um, the Entertainer by Scott Joplin, again, ragtime, and what an aptly titled piece, since this is what I'm doing this evening, is being your entertainer. Um, <laughs> And then Because He Lives, uh, a Gaither tune, oh my, I love that song so much. Um, since I've been able to play him, I have been playing in the church. Uh, as Bill mentioned, I, I'm at uh, Missouri United Methodist Church and the Christian Science Church on Broadway in town. Um, and playing for churches and playing gospel music has really helped refine me as a pianist. Uh, it, it just, it, I mean, it takes a lot of work you're constantly doing something every single week, new material, six or seven different songs. Um, so it really pushes your limit, especially if you've been doing it your entire life. Uh, and another thing that also had pushed me is I learned how to play the organ at the, at the Christian Science Church as a part of my contract. And again, self-taught in how to play the organ. And it, so as you can see, uh, church has been a really good thing for me and I really appreciate it. The, Last piece is all, I could have danced all night, Rodgers and Hammerstein. After I graduated from MU, I got sucked into community theater here in town. Um, <laughs> and I began playing for basically as many shows that I could possibly play for. Um, I, I played for, at CEC, many, many different shows. I was a part of a, a cabaret group for two years, which did a, perform, a cabaret performance every, every month. Yes, Como Cabaret, I was gonna say some people know that. Um, and that really helped a lot too. Uh, oh, the, also, Era Rock. I worked at Era Rock the past few summers um, playing in their professional pit there. Um, so it's brought me from community level all the way up to professional level of playing for a theater. Um, so musical theater has definitely a, a good place in my heart. Um, let's see. Next year, also, I'll be playing at Stevens College next year um, as kind of a contracted accompanist for them. Um, so it's, I keep doing musical theater. It's always haunting me. Uh, <laughs> and I hope that you will enjoy these next three pieces and that you will continue to dance with me all night long after this and intermission. Thank you again.
ubiquitous one. Are you ready? Bring him on. Anthony Hernandez.
that was Mozart's Piano Sonata in F Major, the third movement. Um, as it says in your program, I mean, uh, no reason to say that, but I love that piece so much, as you can tell, flying fingers all over the place. Um, it took a little while to learn that one, um, but I have to show it off as much as I can. <laughs> Next, I'll be playing several other of my favorite tunes. This evening is just kind of uh, a night of lots of, of my favorite tunes that I like to play and listen to. Um, this next one, Saga of Harrison Crab Feathers. Very weird. Um, it's a quirky, fun little jazz tune that I've always enjoyed playing and listening to. Uh, when I did a little research about it, it's the composer wrote it about his dog, Harrison Crab Feathers. And <laughs> which is a weird name for a dog. And I actually also have a weird name for my dog. Her name is Hildegard, and, she, <laughs> and she's a pug. Um, and so this one will be for her. <laughs> um, the next one is a Beatles mel medley. Um, I just smashed together four of some of my favorite Beatles songs, and so guess which ones they are. <laughs> um, you, you will be able to, I think. Uh, Adios no Nino, uh, Goodbye Grandfather by Oster Piazzolla is a gorgeous tango that I have always loved but never, uh, never learned how to play until I was asked to do this concert and I was like, I need to do some tango, so I will learn this piece. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and then after that, um, again, I'm playing another one of my favorite gospel tunes, um, 370 in the hymnal, if you aren't aware. <laughs> <laughs> I always know when they're going to pick that, I'm like, 370, oh, yep, victory in Jesus, I will play that. Um, and I think the only thing that I wanted to add about this was it... <sighs> You have to learn to love yourself, and going to church and doing all these things is, is, is lovely about community, bringing everyone together, um, loving yourself, loving others, caring about each other in your community. Uh, so what I wanted to say.